Hey guys, hope all is well. Uh, happy Thursday. Um, back at it in uh, the ICC five minute pool. I'm gonna give you some more blitz coverage. Um, yeah, so let's just start. I'm gonna let's get started. I'm gonna put myself in the queue, and uh, I did that, and we're gonna see what happens. Hopefully, uh, things uh, things go all right. Um, it's definitely been uh, uh, been a few couple days in the pool. I've been playing pretty decently well. I lost one game yesterday because I flagged, um, and of course that's not an excuse, but uh, but uh, I've, I typically have been getting some good positions. Um, so hopefully that continues today. Um, there was some really interesting chess news while we're waiting, um, uh, specifically uh, with Gibraltar. I, I've been bringing up Gibraltar every day. So there are two things that really interest me. The first thing was uh, Nakamura winning again. Uh, congratulations to him. It feels like it's been uh, several years now where he hasn't lost at Gibraltar. Uh, Chess.com uh, actually said it, it had been how many years? They said it had been, I think, 44 games worth of uh, tour uh, playing chess at Gibraltar and he hasn't lost. So clearly there's something about Gibraltar that Nakamura likes. But even more resonating than that, was um, was the actual uh, sort of uh, the way in which Ho Fan forfeited um, the way she played G4 and F3, sort of this protest game that was five moves long, and it really got me thinking about, um, namely other protest games and also um, just why she was protesting. And I think she might have had a legitimate point. Uh, this idea that she played seven men in an open tournament from nine games. I mean, sir, excuse me, seven women from nine games in an open tournament. I think the organizers were actually um, perhaps pairing her with more men, I mean, with more women than she should have played. Um, and of course, it could also be coincidence, but I can understand why that would uh, make her very upset. Um, of course, the protest was a little bit uh, bizarre, but I think if the if the... She had a goal with the protest, clearly, to get a message out. And as far as that is concerned, she definitely succeeded in getting that message out. So um, I definitely um, I think it was a re resounding success for what she was trying to accomplish. So, um, Anyways, back to the game. Uh, it's been a Sicilian. Um, it was sort of a closed Sicilian because he never played D4. And you know how I feel about closed Sicilians. I have no respect for them whatsoever. Um, and this position, I'm looking pretty good. I could take on b2 if I want, um, but maybe uh, maybe my knight gets a little bit loose after a move like rook b1. Maybe my knight is lacking some squares. So I'm actually going to start with bishop b7, because I think it's more valuable to win the d5 pawn than it is the b2 pawn. Um, and bishop b7, now, uh, it's it, again, it's, I think just getting a central pawn is more important than getting a flank pawn. And the nice thing about this is now I can take on d5 with the knight. And um, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play knight takes d5. And uh, I'm hitting this uh, this bishop on e3. And surprisingly, he's going to let me take it, which is very, very flummoxing or strange or however I'm going to put it. Because now I have the bishops and uh, in a really good position. So uh, I'm in good shape here. I'm going to go b4 now, uh, just sort of attacking the... Um, this whole long chain, and uh, my position is really great. It's just excellent. Um, and if he goes c takes b4, I'm going to go bishop takes g2, and then rook takes uh, b4. So in any case, I'm a pawn up. I have a bishop, uh, which is better than the knight here, and uh, just really good pieces. So um, queen d7 attacks this pawn in h3. Um, hmm. Should I give up this uh, this e6 pawn, this e7 pawn? I don't know. I can. Uh, what are the consequences? I th I don't like. I don't want to give him activity, so I'm just going to play e6 actually. Um, uh, and yeah, okay, h5, no big deal. Now I'm going to go rook h b8, just sort of lining up against uh, lining up against the um, the b2 square. Um, so yeah, okay, now I'm going to take on c3 and play rook b2, and I'm sort of infiltrating here, and this is very, very unpleasant for, uh, for white. Hmm. What to do? I want to go d5, but I don't think it's possible here, because my knight, the c5 pawn is hanging. So I'm going to start with, uh, with queen e7. Uh, my idea is to play d5, but I just got to be a touch patient. 
The other idea with queen e7 is it can, covers the f6 square. And yeah, I anticipated queen f3, but now I can go d5. And uh, actually, I'm going to wait on d5. I'm going to go rook b1 first to trade a pair of rooks. Um, but yeah, I'm in good shape. I'm in real good shape. I also could have gone d5, but I've just, I just I want to play rook b1 and then d5 because I was thinking maybe he's going to look at queen takes d5 after the knight moves. He can, if, and my queen and the queen being pinned on the e line might be a little problematic. Um, but so far so good. I mean, I really just uh, got the two. I got I had the bishops bishop pair um, that I was up upon, and now it's just sort of a smooth sailing conversion so far. Um, so I don't know what. White's gonna do, but it doesn't. The options aren't great. Hmm. Note that if he go, yeah, rook b one, king g two is sort of expected. Rook takes e one, uh, rook takes e one, and now d five, uh, go four, because now once the knight moves, I play bishop takes c three and attack the rook with tempo. So uh, all is good. All is good here. So knight g five. I think I can take this now. Uh, no problem. And, yeah, he had to move the rook because queen takes d5 would have just been a blunder uh, because of uh, bishop takes uh, e3. And rook e2, hmm. I have so many choices here. I'm going to go rook b2 and just continue to sort of simplify because I can. And, uh, and yeah, he just doesn't have any tactical counterplay. I'm a pawn up. My bishop is now going to go to d4 where it's going to be a monster. Actually, the knight's trying to get active, uh, go to h3. So I'm going to play bishop e5, which basically just shuts down that area for the... If he goes knight f4 now, now I'm going to go queen f6. And yeah, he's just sort of in a pickle. Uh, queen f3, I'm going to go queen f6, protect everything. And I'd love for him to go f4, weaken his uh, king side a little bit more, because then I'll just go to d4. Uh, okay, knight g5. Um, I'm gonna go king g7. F4. I love to see that move because I think it just makes him a little bit more weakened. And bishop a1 is a weird move, but my idea is to go queen b2 and actually trade the queens if allowed. I also have h6 in the cards, but queen b2 here is a really good move, just trading the queens. So I'm going to go h6, kick that uh, knight away. And now queens... Where am I going to go? I'm going to go queen... Where am I going to go? No. I'm going to go bishop d4. Uh, put my bishop on the active square. Okay, h5, interesting, I guess. Uh, trying to sort of uh, get some counterplay. Um, I don't think I want to take that pawn, so... Maybe g5 is a good move. Yeah, I'm going to go g5. And now my idea is to go g4 if allowed. g4 is a threat. So I think he's going to have to play g4 himself, because if he moves the knight, I might have queen at 2 check. Wow, he's allowing it. That's surprising, because now uh, g4 is sort of a problem. He can go knight takes d4. Um, oh, I missed knight h2. I missed knight h2. But I'm just going to go queen g5. I can afford to trade queens here because I have uh, I have this outside past c pawn. So um, I think I'm still fine. And I'm going to go f5 first and then king h6 and now just pick up this h5 pawn. And yeah, a three pawns is more than enough to win this game. So now I just gotta push him. And yeah, this this I made this conversion a little bit trickier than it needs to be, but I'm going to win this game pretty easily because I just need to shuttle my C-pawn up the board. And he can he can win my E-pawn, but the C-pawn, as long as that marches, it's not a problem. I'm going to go King B2. Oh, he resigned. Yeah, I, was just gonna, I wasn't even going to push the C-pawn right away because it allows King D3. I was going to start with King B2 and then decide what I want to do. Maybe King C2 and King D2 and shuttle the king off. But a um, hey, clean game. Uh, two bishops. Uh, then I went a pawn, and then I just started to trade a little bit, and then I got another pawn, and then I squeezed and won the game. So, 
pretty clean conversion. Next. Who is next? Who is next? Um, and I'm going to keep saying, like, these closed Sicilians, I mean, you're basically seeding us. You're basically seeding a central square for no apparent reason. That's that's my feeling with these closed Sicilians. So that's why I'm just not a huge endorser of them because it's just like, why are you seeding a central square? You know, like central squares are are so they mean so much. So it's just a bit perplexing that one would do that. So, anyways, while I'm waiting on this queue that's taking forever, um, again, Hoi Fan, um, really brave protest. I mean. You've seen it before, uh, these types of protests, but, um, yeah, I, I really, um, I thought it was interesting. I, I don't, I'm not necessarily, like, loving, I'd rather that she played, obviously, but I love, I just, I thought it was a little bit interesting. Anyways, C4, I'm gonna go for English this time, E6, and then I'm gonna go Knight F3. And the merits of playing, and I'm gonna Fanchao, the merits of playing this sort of English style, where you delay pushing the D-pawn, is actually that bishop b4 check, which is so popular in so many lines, is not actually a thing here because there's nothing to check. So, um, yeah. Knight c6, a little bit strange. Um, I'm wondering if I can go knight e5 and exploit this whole pin action. And so I'm going to try it. Um, if he goes bishop d7, uh, you probably can guess my idea. I'm not going to take on c6, but I, I would intend to actually take on d7 and, of course, get those two bishops. Um, you pretty much can tell my MO by now. Anyway, so knight d5. Okay, now I can take on c6, and I'm also hitting the queen. Um, it has the extra benefit of attacking the queen, so I'm not so sure knight d5 was the best. He can go queen d7. Yeah, I think that's the best move. And that, But now I'm going to go queen takes c4, and... I'm pretty much going to spoil the structure. Uh, the C-pawn now is very weak. So um, I think this is a small victory as far as uh, victories are concerned. So, yeah. Now what? So I'm going to castle. Castling is usually pretty good. And uh, I just think I should have a slightly better uh, a slightly better position by virtue of having this, uh, this, this C-file that's just really logged up and ugly. For black uh, with the structure, so if I can get my knight to c4 or my rook to c1, and eventually I think that advanced static advantage will tell. So bishop a6 attacks e2, so I'm going to go d3, and d3 is a move I was going to play anyway um, because d3 it's really important that I restrict uh, a lot of. Uh, uh, now that this dark this light square bishop's having a problem developing, it's important that I restrict it. So that's pretty much the motif there. Now I'm going to go b3 which has the same idea of restricting the b8 rook. And so, sort of by restricting black's counterplay before you continue with your own plans, you can really um, sort of take advantage of uh, your position a bit later. So, being patient is important. Hmm. So, again, knight b4, which is an option in many of these positions, I would, my idea is to go knight a3 and... And that is sort of the key resource that stops this knight c2 move trapping my rook. So, pretty good here. Doing pretty good. Hmm. And I think this IM Hawksmore is really trying to, is really realizing the pickle that he's in because, again, I'm going to go bishop b2 and then eventually, eventually rook c1 and. These, these static advantages are going to just be enormous. So, um, uh, or disadvantages for black. So, bishop, F6, bishop b7, trying to go to f6, I'll go bishop b2. And bishop f6, okay, uh, but now I'm just going to take that. And then maybe rook c1 here. Um, yeah, I think it's good. I'm going to go rook c1, just attacking the uh, c6 pawn. And king d7, uh, interesting, uh, but it's really not... And now I'm going to have to play knight d2 with the idea to go to e4 and go to knight c5. So I think f5 is forced. Um, but the problem is if he plays f5, he weakens the e5 square, so then I can go knight f3. And h5, I think, is a blunder, because now knight e4 and uh, this knight c5 check is a really, really nasty threat. Um, I also can double on the c5, but I think knight c5 is, is pretty good. Um, 
rook b6, okay? And h5, the idea is to go h4 and sort of uh, maybe trade a pair of pawns. I'm actually going to go h4 and stop him from doing that. And now by fixing this this uh, h5 pawn a light square, it might be a target in the end game. So I really like my position. I think I think uh, I don't think white I don't think black has many resources here, and uh, I really can just afford to torture and slow play it. And so that's what I'm doing. Um, yeah. So h rook g8. Okay. Uh, and now I'm gonna go uh, bishop f3, which just attacks the h5 pawn. And f5, now I just go knight c5 check. And uh, yeah, it does, and now the h5 pawn is just hanging, so I think I can take it. And uh, yeah, I'm loving my position. If he goes f4, now I can go bishop takes f7 and actually hit. Um, I'm, at, I'm at just attacking the f7 pawn too. So I'm a pawn up, and there's not really a whole lot of counterplay here. And, okay, he goes f4, but now I'm going to go bishop takes f7. And now he's two pawns down. And, okay, rook g7. And it's the first sort of difficult decision I have to make. Um, what to do with my bishop. I'm going to go bishop h5. Because now, if he, when he goes H, f takes g3, I can go knight e4 check, and uh, and uh, and then take on g3 with my f pawn. So I'm just going to put my bishop back on f3, uh, where it's sort of putting some pressure, and then I think things will take care of themselves. So yeah, I'm going to go bishop f3, and now knight e4 check is on the, in the cards. Or maybe now I can go g4 actually, and just push my uh, push my g pawn. Yeah, I might go g4. All right, so e5. Uh, I'm gonna go knight e4 check instead because now g4 is not possible. And king e7. Okay, and I'm gonna go rook c5 and just try to um, to double my rooks. And again, the positional domination here. Is really, really just great. So bishop f5, okay, attacks the e4 knight. I'm just going to go king h2 to overprotect the g3 pawn now. Um, make sure that that's shored up. And now I'm gonna, my plan is to go rook a c1 next. I also could have gone knight g5. Maybe that was a better option. But again, I don't mind if he's trying to trade pieces. Um, and uh, yeah, just it looks so ugly for black, honestly. Even the remaining pawns look bad. So yeah, now I'm going to go rook c1, continue to put pressure. Um, now this sort of just doubles in a nice way. Uh huh. So he's attacking my pawn, good for him. I'm going to go 8. Uh, maybe can I, should I go a3? No. Ah! Rook a6 is a blunder because now if I can put my knight on c5, um, it's just a fork. So I'm going to go rook takes d5 check, and now knight c5, and I'm winning a piece. So he's going to resign or flag here. Oh no, he's going to play on. Uh, okay, he gets one pawn move in, but that's hardly enough to change anything. Um... And then I'm just going to go bishop g2, and it's pretty much game over here. And yeah, rather than resign, he flags, but it's, he's just a piece down, um, a piece and two pawns down, actually, in an overwhelming position. So anyways, uh, pretty clean game. Um, uh, I think if we just go back to the opening here, um, I don't know I don't know how good knight c6 is. Um, I think knight e5 is a pretty good answer to that. But I definitely know knight d5 is bad. Um, and after this queen d7, this this queen trade, this end game is just such a such a bore. Uh, not a bore, but such a bother for black. Because there's just, this bishop on c8 is really bad. The double pawn's really bad. And I'm just going to have permanent pressure on them. So I was able to take care of business. On to the next.
All right, I'm going to go C4 again. I got such a pleasant position that now I'm going to play search for Bobby 1 in the same way. And, uh, okay, F5. Okay, so now we have a Dutch. And this is one of the interesting points of playing this way. Um, I'm going to go Knight C3 and um, Bishop B4. Okay, Queen C2 is interesting. I'm not going to, again, I'm going to do something sort of similar to laying the D-pawn. And, yeah, now I'm going to go A3 and take with the queen and play b4 and bishop and getting the bishop on the long diagonal really quickly can be good so that's why i'm doing it so it's a bit of an unusual position now where the, the rooks are going to a pair of rooks are traded and all this but um but yeah i'm actually going to try to i'm going to play h3 g4 this is actually my idea and the point is that he can't capture because of this really long, annoying battery. So I'm wondering if I can get some really good pressure this way. Hmm, tricky situation. So my king is stuck in the middle. I don't know if I want to open the G file. Tough, tough, tough. I'm going to take on f5 and play rook g1. I think uh, it look it just looks really interesting. Oh, knight e4. I missed this idea. Totally missed that. I did not see that coming. Um, it sort of allows him to take with the rook, which might be the better, the more convenient way of capturing, actually. I'm wondering if I can go queen e5 here and then queen takes c7. Ah, but he has queen... Yeah, I'm going to go queen b2 because I didn't like the idea of uh, leaving my b2 pawn undefended. Because in many of these lines, he can actually give up his b8 knight if he can go queen takes b4 and threaten checkmate on b1. So I think it's very important that my queen stays close to that pawn. And okay, e takes f5, now I can go rook g1 and threaten a uh, very cheeky rook takes g7. So rook f7 was played. Um, not really impressed by that, actually. Um, now I'm going to just go d3. Just sort of attacking this knight, and maybe now I can get a knight e5 or knight g5. Next. Okay, knight e5, okay. Decent prophylaxis, but um, I don't know. This His position looks a little loose now. Okay, my knight needs to move, so I have to figure that out first. So hmm. I'm going to go knight h4 because I think, I think the f5 pawn is a little bit weak, and if I can somehow put my knight on f5, then the pressure on g7 would be really great. Um, so knight h4, I think, is sort of strong. And now queen e6, I anticipated that, and my idea was to go rook g5. And I'm just sort of, in a very weird way, ganging up on this f4 pawn. I mean, on this f5 pawn. So, uh, if he goes f4, I think I have rook e5. So, yeah, he went knight c6, but now I can go knight takes f5. And, yeah, that was my point, is that this is just a free pawn. And now I'm also threatening knight takes g7 and knight h6 check. So I think I'm winning here again. I think I just have a winning position. But if you notice, look at these. Look at the bishop pair. I have the two bishops. They're both doing an excellent job here. Um, and again, it's not it's not a sort of a coincidence that uh, that I have good, that good things happen when you have the two bishops. My bishop on f1 doesn't look like it's doing much, but it's doing a great job covering the e2 square and just you know chilling and could be a force later. And then my bishop on on a1 is just on this long diagonal, just raking right. So uh, and that coupled with my uh, my central pawn my central pawn majority is a really big deal. So um, you're you're even able to play really this is a, a relatively creative position, but you can play in uh, really creative ways when you play systems like this. And unfortunately, h6 doesn't actually uh, do anything; it just blunders because knight takes h6 check is a pin. So uh, this should probably be the end of the game. Uh, he's, if he moves the king, I just play knight takes f7. And uh, there's just not much that should 
be going on here. But again, the respect level is just not very strong here, so I'm going to have to continue to play, which is no problem because bishop g2 is now coming and uh, white is to black is totally pinned up. Um, my threat right now is actually to play bishop d5, um, which would just be devastating. Uh, and uh, okay, knight d8 stops that for a hot second, um, but uh, this is still completely winning. So I'm going to trade on b7, and then I'm going to go queen e5, just trying to trade queens, and that should just be it. If he goes uh, queen takes h3, I'll go rook takes g7. Check. So I'm just up in exchange. All good. Exchange and a pawn, actually. So all is good in the neighborhood. No problems. No no worries of any kind, really. Uh, so, yeah. And they just don't give up, I tell you. They really just, they, they just keep playing. Sorry, I keep moving this camera. I just want to adjust it a little bit. But they just keep on keeping on. And, uh, yeah. Okay, so he's going to trade and go for a completely losing endgame. Uh, I take with the bishop because I'm attacking the c7 pawn and also the f6 knight. Okay, knight e8 doesn't do much. I'm just going to play h4. And king d2. And rook g3. And bishop c3. And notice how I'm putting all my pieces in places where everything is relatively protected. Very important to do that. Um... And c5, now he has a backward pawn, so that's good for me. I'm going to go rook g1 and maneuver my rook somewhere else. My other idea is I can go king e3 and king e4, and that's actually what I'm going to do. I changed my mind. I'm going to go king e3 and just march my king in. Hmm. And the f4 pawn is not hanging because I have rook f1, which pins. So he's not going to take the f4 pawn. I'm threatening f5, so that's also a problem for him. And this knight is actually almost trapped. Uh, so I'm going to go e3 to just make sure that the, this knight on e6 doesn't have any moves. And then uh, if this knight on this knight actually moves, so knight e6 moves, moves away, I was going to go rook g5. So he actually resigned because he has no, no good moves here. If he moves the king, then I get to play king g6. If he moves the knight, I go rook g5. And if he moves the h5 knight, then I just take on g7 and go to a winning pawn end game. So he had no moves. So clean game. And again, I just want to emphasize the bishop pair was in instrumental in that sort of that game. Sort of, especially the dark square bishop on the long diagonal was really a menace. So it actually allows me to play really creatively sometimes because I know about these positional points. All right, so e4, c5. I'm going to go for a Sicilian against soft train. I played this guy a million times. And oh my god, another close Sicilian. I, these people, just they just don't learn. What are you doing? Why aren't you playing d4? I don't know. So f4, okay. So I think I'm supposed to go knight f6 against that. And then castle. I'm going to go bishop g4. It's not the most correct line, but it's sort of interesting. Um, it's, 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 I mean, white has the two bishops here, so definitely not 
exactly what uh, what black should be doing, but in a practical game, it's actually not a bad try because black has such good control of the dark square. So, uh, so yeah, it's all right. So let me go e6 just to sort of play a little bit against the f5 push. And uh, and knight d1 is to play c3, but I just go back with my knight on c6, so I don't see the problem. Um, and f5, okay, f5, now he can play f5. Maybe I should, this is actually, a, this is sort of a, annoying, actually. I'm going to go knight e5. And that's actually a blunder. I should have put the other knight on e5, because now this allows f6. And f6 does not look like a move I want to face. Shutting my bishop would be shut, shut in after, uh, on, after bishop h8. But I don't like d4 because now my knight gets the c4 square, and uh, I don't know. Maybe my knight has some counterplay now. All right, actually no. He can act if he moves the bishop now, he's totally fine, and he still has this bind, unfortunately. But um, if if somehow I can get my bishop out the dungeon or maybe attack the f6 pawn, I'll, I'll be okay. But I think white should be better if he moves his bishop here. Yeah, bishop h6, good move. Um, I'm actually I think it's so imperative that I get some counterplay in the dark squares that I'm not actually going to move my uh, my rook. I'm going to play queen b6, and the idea is that is to get really good counterplay quickly on the dark squares now, specifically d4. So I think this is sort of like a positional exchange sacrifice that I'd really be happy for him to take. Um, so it's very thematic. You know, this pawn is on f6. If I can somehow corral it and my bishop gets open again, it, it would become awesome. Uh, so it's just sort of that idea. And b3, I expected that. And what was my idea? My idea is to go knight a3 and now try to put the knight on um, on b5 if it's attacked again. So I think I'm actually getting this d4 pawn unless he goes back to, e to e3 with his bishop, which might actually be the most sensible move here. Um, it's a very responsible move because after bishop e3, he's also threatening d5 himself. But no p shirks responsibility and does d5 and hmm and i'm gonna take no am i gonna take or no do i move the knight or do i take i don't know what to do what to do what to do it's a tough decision. Um, maybe I go knight e5 right away. Or maybe I take on d5 and then go knight e5. Yeah, I'm going to take on d5 and then go knight e5. Because I think it's very important that the bishop on g2 is shut out of the game. Um, very, very important. And I think I should have good counterplay here on the dark squares. Um, I think. Problem is rook c1 and his rook gets activated, but I think if, if I think I might have some counterplay here. Hmm. Yeah, this is the problem is rook is getting activated. So I'm gonna go knight b5, which temporarily stops the rook from coming to c7. I think he's gonna go a4. But if he goes a4, then I at least get knight d4 which attacks the b3 pawn and threatens some forks. Uh, if, my, if somehow my rook was on c8 instead of his, I would be all right. But this rook coming to c7 now is a real problem for me. Um, a real problem for me. So I have to figure out how to get some counterplay before that happens. Because again, 
if my bishop just stays in h8, I'm just a piece down and a whole rook down, really, because I'm down the exchange. Uh, the whole point of the sacrifice was to actually get some sort of uh, some sort of rub against uh, against the, the the white the the black piece, the dark squares. Okay, h5 is really clever. He's, you see, he's just trying to shut out my uh, my bishop. Um, I'm gonna go h6 just to just to uh, stop g5. And knight f2, interesting. It blunders the f6 pawn. That's a bit surprising. I'm gonna take there, and then knight e4. Okay, but now bishop e7, and maybe this was a mistake giving me this e7 pawn. A4, okay, knight d4, now what? Okay, rook c7, rook e8, then covers everything. Um, and again, this bishop, I'm, I'm counting on in many ways that this bishop on uh, g2 doesn't get active. Because if it does, I'm dead. So, ah, but now he's getting the b6 pawn, which is a problem. Well, nothing I can do. Gotta at least take something in the process. Well, I'm just, this is a losing position, but at least I'm going to try and hope that maybe I get some counterplay in the next few moves connected with my, uh, my, my semblance of dark square control. But now that he has an outside past A pawn, that should be real difficult. Hmm. Well, rook e, rook e1 is a mistake because I can fork now. What a mistake. Now I can fork and I'm totally fine. Amazing turn of events. I think I'm fine. Do I take on d6 or do I play rook takes a4? That's the question. I think I play rook takes a4. But I think I'm actually okay now because there's no... Um, sort of eminent problems with my position. And what do you know? I won... Oh. Oh, why did I do that? Oh, that was real stupid. Oh, that was so stupid. Wow, I just, bl I just blundered. But I might have some counterplay here because he's lacking pawns. But I just blundered my bishop for no reason. And then I blundered my rook for no reason. Oh, what a choke job. I had just weathered the storm, and then I just blundered everything. Oh, oh well. Oh, I had, I had a good position. He just played the close Sicilian, and then I just choked up in the last few moves. Right here, I shouldn't, I, I shouldn't have even, I, my, my checks just helped the white king get closer. Um, hmm. I'm curious whether I should have taken the knight or just taken the pawn. I have a feeling that I just should have taken the pawn, but I'm going to check the analysis first. Ah, so okay, so I maybe should have taken the, the, the knight first. Yeah, so for some reason I was a, a bit hesitant. Um, yeah. Taking the knight would have just been a very clear draw, and some some reason I wanted to entertain. I'd just gotten to this point, and I I played so I I was playing my way out of trouble, and then he blundered. And it's like, oh oh, you think you can win? And I think that's a, a problem that a lot of chess players have is they think they make a few good moves, and then back in the game, 
and, and because they made a few good moves, they think, oh, now's the time I'm going to win the game. But you're getting way ahead of yourself. And um, I think that's one of the things that separates really strong players, uh, uh, like, like, the str like the top 100 in the world or so, the Super Grandmasters from, like, everyone else, is they're, they're sort of even... Their even-keeled, like, level-headedness um, and sort of their objective evaluations in all positions. Um, now, there's some players that are exceptions to this, maybe like Jabav or a report, um, but uh, most really, really strong grandmasters, I mean, like, 26, 80-plus, they, um, they have a real sense of... Uh, how can I put it? They just have a real sense of the drawing margin, and, um, and so... And they understand when they can betray the drawing margin, they understand when they need to stay within it, and they understand how close they are from getting out of it. And um, a lot of times, again, we make a few good moves, the amateur makes a few good moves, then they're like, ah, oh, this means I should win. Or they make or they make moves that make them feel good, and then they think they should win, instead of constantly doing the work. And so sometimes you have to remind yourself of that. Because I tell you, if, you're, if your actual goal was to sort of st stay around a quality... Um, you, if, if not your goal, sorry. If your if your idea was to essentially in every position evaluate it as close to equal, um, that would be really monumental, I think, for your sort of objective evaluation of, of stuff because it means you're never getting too high or too low, and I think that's how GMs think, or the really strong ones. I'm not talking about the 2,500 GMs, um, so because I mean the re the reason I'm saying that is like. Obviously, GM is a huge accomplishment, and it's something that I want to do and stuff, but the 2500 GM is nowhere near the level of the, the 2700, so that's why there's a distinction for me. All right, so D4, E6. I'm going to go Knight C3. Um, F5. Okay, so I think he thought I was probably going C4. He probably pre-moved that, but now I'm going to go E4, and now he has real problems because I didn't go C4, so I'm actually just attacking a center right away. And uh, his vision pretty much sucks right now. Um, now, what should I do? I don't know, actually. How do I punish this? I feel like e5 is good enough, just taking control of the most natural developing square for the, um, for the knight. I could have also played e takes f5, but I wasn't so sure. All right, knight f3, that's normal. b6. Now, now at least it's dynamic, um, which is not actually what I wanted. But anyways. Um, okay, bishop d3 is natural, putting the bishop on an active diagonal. And uh, c5, that's weird. I'm just going to castle. I think that's I think that's really premature. I think black needs to start, to start getting closer to castling before he attacks my center. Because now, actually, I'm threatening knight b5 because my king is no longer a problem. Or my king's no longer pinned. And now, or my knight's no longer pinned on the king. And now I can go knight b5. And this is, I think, actually just winning for white. Um, oh, never mind. I didn't see c takes d5, d4. Never mind. I spoke way too soon about it being winning for white. But it's still a problem for white because now I can go bishop g5. Or a problem for black because now I can go bishop g5. And you can't play knight, you can't put a piece on e7 because I have knight d6 check. So queen b8, okay, only move, but you don't necessarily want to be playing moves like that. And, uh, yeah, I feel like I should be better here. So I'm going to go queen e2 or rook e1, I don't know. Queen e2 or rook e1 to defend e5. I'm going to go queen e2, connecting the rooks. And again, if you go if you go knight g e seven, I can go um, a three. So he he can't do that. He can go h six. That might be what he's thinking about. All right, a six. Okay, so now I'm gonna take on d four. Uh, and now he can go knight g seven. But I, I have a space advantage, and that should count for something. And I'm and my king is more is safer, and I'm a little bit more developed. So I have I'm still really skeptical of black setup. Um, I think he sh I don't think he should have taken on d4, though. I think he should have played knight g7. Okay, he goes bishop c5. Now I might have queen h5 check. Uh, 
Okay, bishop c5. Okay, I'm going to go c3. Just to cover that. Um, okay, now bishop e7. Sort of expected. But... I'm going to go bishop f4. I don't see any reason to help black develop. Um, and now this knight on g8 doesn't have a square. So I think that's a, a, a clever way of holding up uh, holding up uh, black up just a little bit. Queen c7. Okay, so now maybe he's thinking about castling queen side, I guess. But I don't know. I don't, I'm not buying it. Hmm. Oh, I'm going to go rook. Rook d1. The d7 pawn is really weak, so if I can sort of line up my rooks against that, I might have something. Also important to point out that g5 is just bad because I have queen h5. And king f7 is also a blunder because now I think I have knight takes f5 or bishop takes f5 with e6 check. I'm going to go knight takes f5, or am I? Maybe bishop takes f5, actually. Now I'm going to go bishop takes f5, because it stops any queen c6 ideas. But again, this is just a free pawn and uh, great, great position, just excellent position. And actually, I like bishop takes f5, because now I might be able to transfer my rook along along the third rank. So now I might be able to entertain rook d3 and rook g3, or rook f3 at some juncture. So, um, all right, g6, not a move you want to make because you you weaken more dark squares around the king. So I'm going to go bishop e4, and now I'm already um, entertaining like a rook d3, rook f3 maneuver. So, yeah. Okay, so he's trying to get the rest of his pieces out, um, and that's admirable, but it shouldn't work. So I'm going to go queen f3 first, just attacking the, um, the bishop, and now attacking the rook. And now I'm just going to double. Bishop h6 is a very important move because now it takes away uh, the f8, the f file for the rooks, and now I'm also threatening rook f3. He's prolonging the struggle just a little bit. I'm going to go rook g3, which has the idea of rook takes g6 if he plays king g8. And now I'm going to try and transfer my other rook from, uh, from where? From, okay, knight e7. I don't like that move. I'm going to go rook d1. And, uh... Okay, king g8. All right, I'm starting to not play cleanly, so this is a problem. Okay, so what do I do here? All right, I'm going to go rook d3 back, just trying to double now. Now if he takes on d4, I can double. I, this last few moves weren't clean. I need to play a little bit faster and a little bit cleaner, so I'm going to shut up for the next 30 seconds or so. And this is losing, actually. Um, this pin should be decisive.
And again, they do not resign. I, I, they really don't. They do have no respect for you, and they do not give up when you're winning. It's amazing, but they just don't. And this guy is just not... I think he's hoping for stalemate, but I'm not going to give it to him. It's funny, because his king will always have a square. Like, if the rook, if he sacks his rook, the king will have g8, so there's no point in doing this. Um, and okay, now he resigned, but like, I don't know, I'm keenly aware that like, I'm not gonna, that he's trying for stalemate, so it's just weird that they still try. Um, so, anyways. I've done it before, but... Again, I got a great position out of the opening. d4, e6, knight c3. I think he sort of had f5 pre-moved, because he didn't expect knight c3, because... Um, okay, if I go c4, I'm not controlling the... If I go c4 after e6, I'm not controlling the e4 square, but with knight c3, I actually am. So after f5, I can just play e4, and um, to have your f-pawn uh, pushed like this and uh, with me breaking on e4 very quickly is just positionally just bad. So that was that. All right, one more game for the catalog, and then uh, that'll be it. So, um, who will it be? Who will it be? Um, hopefully, a, hopefully a really strong player. Hopefully a really, really tough player. All right, an I am, okay, a Toads, okay. Because um, he's such a strong player, and because Hoi Fan uh, had such a time of it with today, I'm going to actually go G4, <laughs> Um, which is not a good move. Uh, and then e3, novelty, protecting that g4 pawn. What do you know? And I'm going to go c4, because i got to control some of these central squares. And he goes f5. Interesting. Very interesting. And uh, I'm going to go h3. And this is really like don't try this at home material. Um, so I really don't try this at home. Um, and because this is not good chess at all. But um, for the sake of uh, enjoyment, it can be really fun. So I'm a pawn down for no apparent reason. That's uh, the first sign that something's gone wrong. Um, but um, I've really gotten... I have an open G file. That's what I can say for my troubles. So um, I'm going to try and castle queenside very quickly and maybe play with the open G file. So that's where my, my head is at. And I'm actually going to offer up the d4 pawn, because I really need to castle as quickly as possible, given my lack of development. So, or my lack, not my lack of development, what am I saying? My lack of material. So I'm just going to castle as quickly as I can, and then put my all my pieces on as active squares as I can, and then see what happens. Because again, his queen has sort of done like a tour de France with all these queen moves. So um, maybe he'll get punished for that. So first step, put the rook on the same line as the king. Um, note that queen takes f2 is not possible here because rook takes g7 and bishop h6. So that's the first step. Next step, um, I'm trying to figure out the next step. Next step, attack the f5 pawn. Knight a6, I wonder if I can play rook g4 here. I don't see the queen having many squares. I don't... Yeah, rook g4 actually just wins the queen, because if the queen couldn't move because the rook takes g7 check, and now I can just play queen e6 check, and I just take the queen. Unbelievable. 
Unbelievable. And now I'm going to throw in queen d7 check, which forces the king back to, uh, to g8. And now I'm just going to take and play bishop h6, and I think it's, uh, it's going to be checkmate. Because he can go rook f1, but then I just go knight d1. And wow, he resigned. Wow. Quick, really quick game. So, um, <laughs> I won with g4. Uh, not what you should be doing, uh, particularly against uh, anyone strong. Um, but where do you get into trouble? Okay, so this is not good chess on my part, but I don't like... C6 is a decent move covering the, the d5 square from the knight, but it's not t entirely necessary, but it's okay. It's reasonable. Um, I don't, I didn't like this queen f6. I didn't like this queen f6 move, um, moving it again. And then I, okay, he wins a second pawn, but again, he's a little bit undeveloped and I do have the, the g file, half open g file. So I could at least hope here. And then, then he made another queen move, queen takes f2, and then another queen move, queen h4. And in this position, I think he's still fine. Actually, I think he's just winning. Um, if he plays queen takes c4, which uh, just wins a pawn, I can't actually... I don't have any tactics yet, um, or ever. Uh, and But the problem is after knight a6, rook g4, his queen is actually trapped. Because it can go to h5, it can't go to h6. And h3, I, if he takes an h3, I have rook takes g7 check, uh, picking off the queen. So that was that. Uh, but I think... Queen takes c4 would have been winning, and I'll just do a quick check of that. And yeah, queen takes c4 is just minus 2. So, totally winning position. Um, so, I, I still can play g4 better than I did, but I'll take the w. And that's that. Well, uh, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed, and uh, I'll be back soon. Thanks.